Thank you for visiting my YouTube channel to get your daily Bible verse and Bible chapter. I hope you have a great day and come back each and every day for a new verse and a new chapter. Thank you and God bless. Second Kings 9 Jehu of Israel One day Elijah the prophet ordered a member of the guild of prophets, Get yourself ready. Take a flask of oil and go to Ramoth Gilead. Look for Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimbashi. When you find him, give him away, get him away from his companions and take him back. Take him to a back room. Take your flesh, flask of oil and pour it over his head and say, God's word, I anoint you king of Israel. Then open the door and get out of there as fast as you can. Don't wait around. The young prophet went to Ramoth Gilead. On arrival, he found the army officers all sitting around. He said, I have a matter of business with you, officer. Jehu said, Which one of us? With you, officer. He got up. And went inside the building. The young prophet poured oil on his head and said, God's word, the God of Israel, I have anointed you king of Israel over the people of God. Uh, over Israel. Your assignment is to attack the Regime of Ahab, your master. I am avenging it. the massacre of my servants, of prophet. Yes, the Jezebel messenger of all the prophets of God. The entire line of Ahab, Ahab is doomed. I'm wiped out, wiping out the entire bunch of that sad lot. I'll see to it that the family of Ahab experiences the same fate as the fa family of Jerem. Son of Nebat. And the family of Busha. Son of Aha. As for Jezebel. The dogs will be careless. We will eat her carcass. In the open field of Jezreel, no burial of her, for her. Then he opened the door and made a run for it. Jehu went back out to his officers. They asked, is everything all right? What did, what did the crazy fool want with you? He said, you know what kind of man all talk? That's not a lie. They said, tell us what's going on.
God, he said, he told me this, and this is this. In effect, God's word. I anoint you king of Israel. They sprang into action. Each man grabbed his robe. They piled it on top of the steps for a makeshift throne. Then they even blew a trumpet and declared Jehu is king. That ignited controversy of Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nishbi, against Joram. Meanwhile, Joram and the and the entire army were defending Ramoth Gilead against Hazel, king of Aram. Except that. Joram had pulled back to Jezreel. To convalesce from the injuries he got from Armenes in the battle of with Hazel, king of Aram. Jehu said, If you really want me as king, don't let anyone sneak out of the city. Blab the news in Je Jezreel. Then, Jehan, then Jehu mounted a chariot and rode to Je Jezreel, where Jerome was in bed resting. King Aria of Judah had come down to visit Jerome. A sanctity standing duty on the water tower in Jadrius Real saw the company of Jehu arrive. He said, I see a Bring bend of men, Jerome said. Get a horseman. Send him out to meet them and inquire is there anything wrong. The horseman rode out to meet Jehu and said, The king wants to know if anything's wrong. Jehu said, What's it to you whether things are right or wrong? Fall in behind me. The sanctity said the messenger reached out to them, but he's not returning. The king then sent a second horseman. When he reached, reached them, he said, the king wants to know if anything is wrong. Jehu, Jehu said, What to you whether things are right or wrong fall in behind me? The sanctity said, The messenger reached them, but he's not returning it. The driving is like the driving of Jehu, son of Nishi, crazy. Joram ordered, get the chariot ready. They hitched up his chariot. Joram, king of Israel, and Ah, king of Judah, each in his own chariot, drove to meet Jehu. They met in the field of Naboth of Jezreel. When Joram saw Jehu, he called out, Good day, Jehu. 
Jehu answered, What's good about it? How can there be anything good about it as long as... as the permission wearing and stories of his mother Jezebel pollute the country. Joram wheeled his chariot around and fled yelling to Ah, it's a trap. Ah. Uh, Jehu pulled out his bow and released an arrow. It hit Joram between the shoulder blades and went right through his heart. He slumped to his knees in his chariot. Jehu ordered Bikar his lieutenant, quick, throw him into the field of Naboth of Jezreel. Remember when you and I were driving the chariots behind Arab, his father? That's when God pronounced this doom upon him. As surely as I saw the blood of murdered Namath and his sons. Yesterday, you'll pay for it on this exact piece of ground. God's word. So take him and throw him in the field. God's instructions carry out to the letter. Ah. King of Judah saw what was going on and made his escape on the road toward Beth Hagen. Jehu chased him, yelling out, Get him! To Jehu's troop shot and wounded him in his chariot on the hill up to Gur near IBM. He was able to make it as far as Megadu. There he died. His aides drove on to Jerusalem. They buried him in the family plot in the city of David. On the eleventh year of the reign of Joram, son of Ahab, Ah became king of Judah. When Jezebel heard that Jeru has arrived in Jezreel, she made herself up, put on eyeshadow, arranged her hair, and posed seductively at the window. When Jehu came through the city gate, she called down, so how are you? How are things, Zemara? You dashing king killer. Jehu's Jehu looked up at the wi window and called, "Is there anybody up there on my side? Two or three." Palace Ibrups looked out. He ordered, Throw her down. They threw her out of the window. 
her blood splattered on the wall. And the horses and Jehu trampled her un under the horse's hooves. Then Jehu went inside and ate his lunch. During lunch, he gave orders, Take care of that damned woman. Give her a decent burial. She is, after all, a king's daughter. They went out to bury her, but there was nothing left of her but her skull, feet, and hands. They came back and told Jehu, and he said, It's God's word. The word is spoken by Elijah of Teshbite in the field of Jezebel. Dogs will eat Jezebel. The body of Jezebel will be like dog drippings on the ground. In Jezreel, old friends and lovers will say, I wonder, is this Jezebel? John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe, Martha? John eleven twenty five and 26. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? One of my favorite verses is Philippians 4.13. And it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you have your own favorite verse, please put that down below. And don't forget to smile, because you never know what a smile can do for someone's day. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you for watching today's video. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, so you can remember to watch each and every day's video. Thank you for the ones that have been with me from the beginning. Please help me expand my ministry. Thank you and God bless.